Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Books at the Bottom of the Stairs. My name's Lorreen. Uh, you know what? I'm going to spell that for you. L, like, like lovely, A, U, R, E, E, N. Lorreen, just like Maureen, but with an L in the front. I don't know why I felt the need to do that. It just, like, you know, just sometimes crops up that in case, uh, <laughs> in case someone hears it wrong. Anyways, today, started off with a crazy moment. My husband was, he went out the door and he waves because we're nuts and he waves to me and then he, he looks at his hand because he waved with his right hand and he looks and he realizes he doesn't have a wedding ring on. So he comes back in and he sort of sticks his hand through the mail slot for a bit of a joke and I look in his spot where he usually puts all these sorts of things and I say, there's no ring here. And uh, so he comes in and goes, that's not possible, which is his default statement. And he's like all of a sudden charging around, where's my wedding ring? Where's my wedding ring? And yesterday was our um, 35th wedding anniversary. And so he knew he had it because <laughs> he'd seen it the day before. So he's charging around, he's trying to find it. And finally, like he kind of scratches his head, like, like where, what on earth did I do with it? And he realized he's had it on the whole time on his left hand, where it belongs. I'm very glad he had a menopausal moment. It's good for men to experience these things. So, so that was the beginning of the day. Um, I had a very interesting conversation with my sister over the course of the last two days about books and reading, and she's on a an island off of an island on the west coast and uh, so she's got to take two ferries to get to Vancouver and uh, she is in a situation where she more or less has to order her books in uh, by mail and uh, so she was going to go to Vancouver next weekend and she was complaining about the books that she had been reading and she's she is one of the people who's involved in the um, the COVID sort of setting sorting things out for the public so she's had a really, a, really a difficult last two years of being pretty rough. So she's looking for books to read that uh, what we finally decided was the descriptor as we worked our way through all the things that she liked and disliked. She says, um, I just don't want a book that crushes my soul. <laughs> so I, yeah, I completely hear that. Does everybody have to have missing children or dead bodies or, or, you know, like there's just so many sort of soul crushing themes out there. Now she's not looking for a book that's light and fluffy because I immediately went to the middle grade um, books that I enjoy. I don't think those are fluffy. I think they can be quite hard, but what what I feel is that the protagonist almost always comes to some kind of um, rescuing themselves, figuring it out themselves, or there is some sort of um, other outside force that helps them to solve things. So I feel like they're always a safe book when you feel like crap. Um, anyways, that's not her, uh, that's not her preference. So I went through my pile of books. Now my, my list of piles of books from the past <laughs> and just tried to find books that I thought she might enjoy that actually weren't trivial or superficial and I love those books because my gosh I need them too but just books that were were um, challenging uh, had good characters good setting the writings were excellent and just there wasn't some sort of really dire situation at the center of things so what I'm hoping to do is to put books up because uh, I don't have them all in in uh, physical form. So I'm just going to go through the email that I sent to her. And the first book that I came up with was Swamp Angel, which I did review uh, earlier this year. Swamp Angel by Ethel Wilson is a Canadian classic. And if it's about a woman who um, leaves her husband. So like, yeah, this starts off right in the beginning. And uh, um, we get past that piece fairly quickly. And she is reconstructing her life and she chooses to do it at a fishing lodge up in the north of BC. And the writing is just stellar. Uh, the characters are very well developed. It's a small cast of characters. There's a small set of dilemmas. There's a, um, they are sort of interpersonal relationships that are the dilemma for the most part. And 
it's just so beautifully written and it's reasonably short so that's for sure one the other one that i loved has not got as much popular hits as uh, for among my friend group as i thought um, because I think it's got a lot of humor in it, and it's definitely up my humor alley, is Bare Necessity by James Gouldborn. And this is about a hapless father who is in a situation where he's got to raise his young son by himself. The son is around 11. Things have transpired that are off book, and um, he's really just, he's just a giant canoodle he doesn't know what he's doing and so he's forced into having to mature so we see both the dad's point of view and the boy's point of view and they are trying the dad is trying and trying and trying and the son is forgiving and forgiving and forgiving the solutions to all of their dilemmas is just on the wacky doodle side and I really enjoyed it because it's a whole group of um of community that are on the fringes of things, you know? So like maybe one of them I think is a, a street artist who practices still statues and just, just things like that. It's really, I totally loved it. Anxious People by Frederick Blackman. Uh, so the title I think can be a bit off-putting. Uh, I believe this person is from Scandinavia somewhere. Uh, the author and um, again it's a bunch of people who come together it's interpersonal uh, dilemmas about the purchase of an apartment and um, a bank robber who has stumbled upon this um, open house and uh, so it's like a hostage situation except again everybody's just such bumblers including the police that it's just it's a riot of real human uh, conditions and concerns and ineptitude that let's just say there's a happy ending and and there are no guns involved all right the other one is a def is definitely a middle reader and I adored it and I think especially in this pandemic you cannot go wrong with this book it is about oh first let me tell you the title I got too excited there the astounding broccoli boy by Frank Frank Cottrell Boyce, and that's uh, two T C O T T R E L L Boyce. This is um, a book about a boy who turns green. There is um, an epidemic going on in England where um, it's it's like a flu. It's it's called the kitty cat flu or something like that. And um, somewhere in this like abundance of flu like symptoms and so forth, he turns green. And he doesn't have any flu-like symptoms, so where, what is this? And he gets to the children's isolation ward at the local hospital. And there, also green, broccoli green, is another lad. But this happens to be the bully in the school, and these two just do not coexist. And so they're both in the isolation ward, and they have to coexist. And their solution to this is to determine that they are indeed superheroes because it's only superheroes that turn green, otherwise no one else does. So it's like obvious they're superheroes. So they decide that in fact, it's their task to escape the isolation wards and save, just save the world basically. It's so delightful. The characters are so well drawn and the adults are just the perfect foil. There's lots of drama, surprising amount of drama. And I have reviewed it earlier, but I haven't figured out how to link to past videos, so you'll have to scroll. All right, another one that I totally adored, and I think this is right up my sister's alley, is River by Helen Humphreys. She's a Canadian author and poet, and River is a biography of the river that runs outside her, I, I'm pretty sure it's her home, yeah. And I don't know the geography of it, but she is a swimmer. She really likes swimming. I, not me, but my sister is a big swimmer. She likes to swim in the ocean. And so she doesn't have a problem with sharks and whales and osprey. No, osprey's a bird. Well, whatever. Osprey shit. So anyhow, I thought she would really enjoy this book because it describes the character of the river over the course of several years and several seasons and just during flood tides and low um, water levels. And just, it's really, really an evocative book of living with 
a water body. So good, good, good. Under the Whispering Door by J.K. Clune is uh, currently taking off in all kinds of places and it is about a young, not a, well, a middle-aged middle man who's just burnout, boredom and so on with his job and he's given an assignment that his superiors feel he's bound to fail at because they would like to fire him but he's just so good at his job. They, they've they set him up for failure so off he trots. One of the things he has to do is assess um, a peculiar orphanage that has children with special needs and uh, when I say special needs they are like perhaps the son of the devil. Oh! Small spoiler. So off he goes, these kids are really eccentric, but loving, they're enthusiastic, they're so well described, they've got beautiful sense of adventure, and the person who's in charge of caregiving for them is also just a wonderful, wonderful human being. And the main protagonist is coming to um, realize sort of the depth of nothingness in his life, except for his cat, which he's taken with him. And um, so this is a book about sort of, it's sort of a book of resurrection. Um, the second book is out and I have heard that there are trigger warnings around um, suicide. So I'm not going to recommend that book, but this one was definitely ex excellent. And uh, the other book that I suggested to my sister um, is Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day. And I didn't take the time to find the author. I'll add that in the notes. But frankly, the movie is just brilliant. And I will try and figure out how to do that too and link the movie. Um, this is where an older lady, she's sort of a spinster and she's desperate for a job. She hasn't had anything to eat all day. And she kind of stumbles on an interview and the, uh, for a job. And the woman who's interviewing her just goes along with it and just kind of hires her, just thinks she's been sent by the agency. And the two of them have the, the wildest day because the employer is um, sort of deciding which of maybe more than two men that she would like to settle down with and she's kind of a gold digger but she's also not she's got a heart of gold but a, a deep pocket and Miss Pettigrew is very correct and she's she doesn't fit in at all. She doesn't understand this kind of world of glamour and glitz and so on. But in the end, she's having the time of her life, although it's a very quiet time of her life. So no dead bodies there. Um, I really enjoyed the movie. The woman, the actress who plays Miss Pettigrew is perfect. And the actress who plays the employer, oh my gosh, she's just such a, she's just a giggle. So those are my book recommendations. This is part one. I should have said that at the outset because I realized I've got all, I got so excited writing to my sister that there's a whole second email of other books that I would recommend uh, that would crush your soul. So that's part one. And I think any one of these books will uh, be a treat for you, especially if you're just thinking, oh, give me something where I don't feel sad or destroyed at the end of it. Yeah, perfect. So I hope all your reading dreams and adventures continue to come true and I'll see you with part two. Bye-bye.